<clears throat> Welcome back to Still Talking Uncut. We're your hosts, Sean Rixby. I'm Big Easy. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Made it two weeks in a row. We're a little late. Uh, Sean's going to try to b- blame the guest. It ain't never the guest's fault around here, man. It's always Sean's fault. So, and, you know, we had to pick up where we left off. A little later than usual, but we're here. We're here. Welcome to the show. We got a special guest tonight, my man, Mr. TikTok Sensation, uh, OG himself. from TikTok from way back in the day, my man Dustin, old Still Liquor. How you doing, brother? Welcome to the Howdy, show. Howdy, gentlemen. Howdy. How's it's it going, been man? an eventful week. An eventful <laughs> week, huh? Oh, Lord. I had a, well, I was in Georgia last week. I got to travel a lot now, and I got a four-year-old girl who's big brother, who's six, jumped on her leg. While I was playing on the bed, unintentionally, but uh, equally as broken. So now she gets toted around everywhere. We got a hard cast on her today. But uh, well, I hope, I hope yeah, she up, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, she will. She will. So I guess everybody survived the, uh, the apocalypse from the eclipse today. You know, it's supposed to be this big apocalypse. Uh, it was cool. Like I was, I was right in the totality range. It was cool yep. when it got. It got dark. Kids was outside, and uh, you know it was it was awesome. The kids like this is cool. And I'm like, cool. You ain't gonna see it for another twenty years. I ain't gonna see it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. Nah. Last one. You, you got to know where you're at. So so uh, we've already got drinking little, all. Yeah, a little past what we normally do. What are you drinking on there, still liquor? It's water for me, boys. It's a yeah, water right? night. It's a school Working. night. That it is. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and crack this open. This is uh, Tater's Watermelon Jalapeno. And also, I got Tater's uh, Apple Brandy. I'm going to sip on it for a minute first, actually, before I go getting into that jalapeno, because I know that's going to trash anything that I plan on tasting. Oh, yeah. You're going to taste a jalapeno real hard smacks you in the face it ain't bad though that apple brandy's pretty good man ain't no Ohio apple brandy but it's some apple brandy hey hey, no well yeah i slid you (laughs) so we went bowling friday or saturday night uh sean didn't join us we had a big shiner party um he left us hanging because i'm not what you call a shiner so yeah whatever (laughs) <laughs> uh, Hoots came up. If like Hoots came up from West Virginia, and Sean couldn't come down from Springfield, we see how it is. And uh, <laughs> I can, I can see feelings. how that's a gap, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got to drive around the state. Just oh, he was probably over. prepping for that solar eclipse that just happened. It there. was, yeah, it was cool. But uh, yeah, so we all got together and we bowled and and drank and I left the uh, old noble. Couple jars. He's supposed to give. Uh, well, he's supposed to give one to uh, to Jeff. You gotta give one of those to Jeff Noble. I know you don't remember. What kind of jars are you leaving? <laughs> some uh, strawberry banana. Mm. That's some good liquor. I imagine there's something about the brandy that comes out of that part of Ohio up there. Um, yeah, it is. There's something I don't know what y'all do with it, whether you stick your wiener in it or what it is, but there's something about that brandy up there. It's and magic, I ain't quite man. figured it out yet. <laughs> it's uh we we get the water from work. So oh, like, you know that, see I yeah. get mine from the toilet. I don't I don't uh, I, we, I mean when I ran liquor you see, know, all, back when I did it. The water we we get is, you know, it comes from the whole fucking city, sixty thousand people. There you go. There you go. So it's so it's sixty thousand strong. Huh? <laughs> I, I get my uh, I get that old. It's that old Dayton hose water, man. It's straight out of the hose. Yep. Straight from Dayton, you know. It's all the fluoride and, and extraness it gives it that extra flavor. Well, if you really concentrate that fluoride down, it'll fix a rotted tooth. Yep. I knew a guy. <laughs> I knew a guy. <laughs> I knew a guy, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, they liked it. So talk a little bit about, well, I guess, fuck, man, introduce yourself, tell everybody, uh, you know, a little bit about you, how you got started, and uh, we'll go from there. 
Well, wait, 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 sorry. Easy, what are you drinking on? Um, let's see what I want. He don't even fucking tonight. know, man. I don't know. I'm going to drink some Uncle Dum Dum's corn liquor. Uncle Dum Dum's corn liquor. As much as you drank of that, you thought it had been gone by now. I don't drink a whole lot, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Now are you are you drinking the actual dum dums or are you drinking the Sugarland dum dums? I'm drinking the good dum dums. Oh, okay. His the actual dum dum. Okay. The better dum dums. The mm-hmm. good dum dums. I mean, I got some vodka over here, but I didn't want to break into it. Oh, you must be talking about that high rock. Oh yeah, that's a good high rock. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know how to drink that, right? <laughs> Straight from the bottle. But, to the all toilet. Right. What, what are you drinking on, Sean? Oh, you watermelon jalapeno. Yep, and uh, Tater's uh, apple brandy and a little bit of water. Nice. What would you think of the jalapeno, uh, the jalapeno spiciness on it? Because it's got a, a Man, chunk of jalapeno it. in it. Um, I love it. Uh, I actually talked to Tater a little bit about that. And uh, I'm going to be utilizing one of his secrets here soon. Nice. Yeah, he's a good old boy. Hell yeah, I can't make your shit no worse. I'm telling you, man. But that apple brand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I caught him off guard with that one. <laughs> Te- teaspoon of sugar makes the medicine go down. That's all I got to say. Damn right. Uh, man, I I don't know. I put them in the mash and even had it come out hot for it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I ain't asking for any ancient Chinese secrets, but uh, I can say I've failed a hell of a lot more than I've won with jalapenos. Um which is everything that. I've made with jalapenos. A lot <laughs> of times they come out, dude, I haven't liked any of it. A lot of times they come out tasting like green peppers, the green fleshiness of the jalapeno. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if you just uh, use the seeds and, and didn't use, because the seeds are the hot part, if you just use the seeds and didn't use the green flesh, if it wouldn't come through, uh, you know, greeny, <laughs> I guess. It's, it's got right. that chlorophyll taste to it. I wonder if you remove that and just use like, Maybe put the seeds in your thumper instead of the flesh, if that would change that. So, um, Sturge, you love doing jalapeno, bro. Do one with just seeds and no flesh in the thumper, and then let me try it, and I want to see if it's... Man, I, so I got a jar of his 145, actually. It's sitting right here. There it is. Um, jalapeno. And uh, I'm going to proof it down to 100, man. Or even 90. I might proof it down to 90 and see what it what it's like. But Yeah, I thought you was going to bring that Saturday, and I was going to get to try it, but... Leave it to me, man. Yeah, fucking Sean. No show Rigsby. Go ahead and y'all <laughs> tell me something I don't know. <laughs> that's that's really supposed to be my job most of the time. I don't know what that's all about. So uh, uh what what state are you in, Dustin? Uh I'm back home. I'm in Ohio today. So uh yeah, I'm happy to be here for sure. Um I guess I'll give a little bit of background then. Uh, yeah, tell us uh, how you got started. You know, how, how'd you win and how did you get started? So, hell, it's been, I haven't tracked the years, but it's probably been over 10 ago. Uh, I got started because I was young and dumb enough to carry bags of sugar and grain up the hill nice. for a couple of old timers that was making runs of liquor. And it was old school, um, you know, flour paste, copper still. Um, but I'm also from a small town where every year uh, we have a moonshine or a, a community festival. It's not moonshine related at all. In my entire childhood, you'd see the sheriff of our town um, with a pot still set up at that festival, serving out little baby shots of, of liquor right out the worm. Do they still do that? And, time? you know, so it's, it's not a, it's not a, family heritage necessarily for me but it's certainly within my community and uh you know and i'm still from a small enough area that it's something to do yeah and, are you uh, are you from where your parents were from yeah yeah and i would yep. imagine that you know they're part of it too growing up and and seeing it and oh and yeah i mean well it, that's uh, that's who you that that festival with was your parents yeah. you know i mean so you'd walk up and then you'd see you know, dad sneak a sample if mom wasn't looking, or uh, you'd see, uh, you mom know, and dad I mean, sneak some samples together. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you know, that's that's the way you're supposed to do it. I think when you're you married, know, you was looking uh, for corn dogs and, yeah. and, uh, and you know games of play. You don't care nothing about that, but you know, you, we get older and you look back and you think, like, man, you know, that had to have been what that was all about. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, and it just, but you know, it's a good community event. And I'll tell you what, the one thing that I've learned. So, and then you coast forward 10 years, I didn't have any idea what I was doing necessarily. I just knew how we once made liquor, you know, mm -hmm. in that style. And that was the little rig that I had a little thumper, you know, taste cap and all of it. Well, TikTok became a thing and uh, I'm cruising through and I seen a dude on there making liquor and I hop in the comments and I'm kind of dipshit my way into them because that's the way I do stuff. But uh, no response because, of course, you know, I'm just some guy saying probably ridiculous things that didn't make any sense to anybody that had ever read a book about distillation. <laughs> or maybe dude didn't know the answer. <laughs> you know, or whatever the case was. But I, I put a lot of it on me. But I was like, man, they got to. I get what it is. I don't know. I make liquor. So I'm like, all right, cool. I, I put together like five quick mashes, make videos on them, collapse the still, uh, walk out of the garage, blame both oh, out, hold on, shrink hold it on like that. a pop can. I'm disgusted. So, um, so you're, you made you, you made you a still. Is this the, uh, the jar rig that you had at first? Yeah. So that's where, that's the birth of the baby jar rig was, okay. uh, what can I buy with zero dollars? Um, My cause man. I'm, you know, I got, I got a family I support Hell yeah, and uh, this was supposed to be something that was just literally like, Hey guys, what's up? Um, so you walked yeah. out of the building and the flame went out and you collapsed your pot. Was it just like a stainless, uh, pan pot or was it a copper pot? No, it was a copper pot. And had I would have known now or then what I know now, it could have been blown out. It could have been fixed by just damn near to anybody. Um, yeah. Not that it was anything impressive. It was all hammered yeah. and wrinkled. And, Still, um, yeah. But I was more so not to the point. Also, at that point, now we all, you know, talk about as much as we fail and all that. Um, that wasn't really the way it was then. But it also, to me, I had never been to a moonshine festival or watched really moonshine or, you know, I hadn't interacted in that part of it. So TikTok was really the first time you'd ever talk about it. Um, it's not like this was necessarily the type of thing you would hang a banner outside and be like, hey, let's, you know, not that it's really yeah. wrong, but it's also frowned upon. Um, it, it's, it's taboo if you forget to denature it or something, which I never have. Um, yeah, but if you, know, you would, then it, that would be frowned upon. Uh, you know, like, and so you you had you had YouTube and people just putting up videos for you to go and watch, and you could comment, but there's real no interaction. And Facebook, when it was even when it was young, it was a shit show. And so you're right, you know, TikTok came along and it really gave a platform for people to communicate back and forth, and and become friends and and you know, well, have, and free knowledge spread and actually talk to these people one on one that you know you see doing things. You, you hit it on the head because it it became like that's it started out like a hey let's let's oh it would be cool to get a chat with somebody else that actually does this mm -hmm. it rapidly turned into you learn what the smartest guy in the room knows all the time and everybody just rapidly or at least that was my perspective some of y'all may have been way better informed than I was at that point but when I started TikTok I knew less than the basics. And thought I was going to come on there and teach somebody something. And then you get like, you not only did this become way more than just a couple guys, you know, you know we all know each other personally yeah. um, at this point. How crazy is that? That you're going to have people from all over the United States that become that close of friends meeting on the internet because of some TikTok app. Um, but that's knew, what like, it's became, you never right? I knew that you would find fucking 20 people within two hours of you. And there you go. Love what there you, you go. Love, you know, and yeah, and, and you you just you never thought it. You know, and, and like you said, like how cool is that? To you know, you finally find people that you can bounce ideas off of that you can speak to because we all have the same common yeah. goals to make the best jar of liquor I can make, and yep. for no other reason than I just want to consume the best jar that I can pr uh, produce for myself. Well, and, yeah, and something to leave behind. I mean, a jar of liquor never expires, right? A jar of right. liquor will also run a tractor. I mean, there's there's just a lot of things that could potentially be very valuable about having that. I mean, of course, the the ultimate in survivor stills is the air still. You can hook that puppy up to a Honda generator, <laughs> set it right on the top. It'll catch it, and dump it right back in the generator. That's called self-sufficiency. <laughs> You can it's, fucking distill mouthwash in the liquor. Who would have thought? 
I mean, you, you must have ran uh, it too hard or something because that shit was still blue. <laughs> it was green. Need to tune times. in and watch Mr. Uh, I only need uh, one Moonshine Shua. Give some pointers uh, yeah. on that. Hey, show me. Show oh. me, Daddy Shua. Show I'll me. have to check oh, that out. Hey, look, hey, look his, hand, his hands are too small to be calling Daddy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, hey, they make liquor, man. It's just... Uh, they, you know, it's it's real simple. It reminds me of a, an all copper rig with just a straight arm to a lie big, all stainless. I didn't mean copper. I mean all stainless rig. It's just a stainless dome in there, and it collects on there and cools down and runs out. It's wild, but it works. You know, like like you said, you hook that up to a generator. Um, you go steal somebody solar panel and run that thing. <laughs> hold, up. hold up, you're telling me Shua built a genuine top end for an air still. No, 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 no. I was talking about. I was talking Wait, about. Wait, what do you build? Uh, nothing, nothing. I was talking about how the air still works. It's just a dome. Oh, okay. A stainless okay. dome, and your vapor collects on the top of the dome, and then just runs into your thing. There's no like coil or any type of condenser on there. It's just blowing cool air on the top of this dome, this stainless yeah. dome, and it just the alcohol beads and runs out. And there's a video online of them doing that with a tarp too to demonstrate yeah. it. Yeah, um, and that, that's what it reminded me of the the old survival shows where they'll uh, they'll uh, they'll dig a hole and they'll put a piece of plastic with a bowl in the middle and they'll put dirty water around the bowl and then it'll condense. You're right. Yeah, it, it's, there's nothing built on there. It's, it is just a dome and a heater and a fan blowing on it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's as simple as it gets. And and that's exactly what it reminded me of was the survival shows where they they dig the hole and put a some whatever you know plastic tarp and they just put a rock in the middle and then just let it kind of let it evaporate and condensate and run into it mm -hmm. and i'm not a big fan of the liquor that comes out of it <laughs> but <laughs> oh you know it's great i made that that video that that's still there from actually the uh the bush light video for tiktok oh yeah and uh i got the uh how was it <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the heart to tell them that I, I ran it long enough to collect about yay much liquor <laughs> and went nope and shut it off and had there's no like no I mean it's fun in the concept that I can dump it's bush cool. light peach in there it's it, it's never going to work guys I'm sorry that's going to be horrendous it's, it's, yeah it's ter there's nothing to clean it up uh, you can only put so much uh, copper mesh in that little catch. And it's just it ain't my dick, man. Like it, it war it will make alcohol, but it makes it's designed to make water. And yeah, you know, I, yeah. when I when I ran that that mouthwash through there and it transferred all the color, it really told you what you needed to know about the the quality of the distillate coming out of it. You know? Now listen, it doesn't smear at all. It's a high quality still. You can check <laughs> it out. Link in bio. Uh, <laughs> link, I got my a link on my TikTok shop. Still liquor in the TikTok shop. Go Get a twenty nine nine. No. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, so, Lord. I remember when you first got on TikTok in your rig, like I love like redneck slap together. You shouldn't be making liquor on that type of rig rig and you're over just making magic, you know, and, and I remember I saw yours and, and he, you know, you got this pot and, uh, and then <laughs> like you got these jars and these jars are just caked in, in, in paste. And I'm like, I'm thinking like, man, this motherfucker don't know how to solder. <laughs> it, it got a little rough around the edges. Um, <laughs> it happens, you know. And, I also and, didn't have a flat piece of copper for that, but I did have an inch and a half 90. So I cut a slit down the middle of it, heated the shit out of it with a torch <laughs> and beat it with a sledge till it was a flat piece of copper. That's and then I'm cut out about, circles man. with a grinder to, as jarlets. And they were way too thick. The rim barely went on. You couldn't have put a good basket in there if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I actually took a grinder around the edge of the lid and ground them down thinner, thinner? just to get the jar lid to start. A little bit more. Um, more I had right? never seen you know anybody actually make a jar rig or no, no thought that deep into it. I just figured it would be like I seen a shine maker put a video up, and I'm like, oh, that can't be that hard. <laughs> it's never that hard when you watch somebody else do it <laughs> i've seen a video once you know that's that's why i have a house full of unfinished projects right there yeah, um, 
<laughs> I, I was from the beginning. I'm like, bro, I love your rig. And you know, you read the comments, <laughs> people are just bashing. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I love yeah. that rig. I, like, yeah. I love your rig. I love that rig, man. You know I what? Like that better than a brand new North Georgia 100 gallon stuff. I like that old redneck slap together. It, it, you know, like like old Moonshiner Chad when he had his shit on there. That dude had on four pounds of paste on each jar. And I'm like, yeah, you can make the liquor. That's the shit, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> but he was making it, though. You know, I mean, that's the thing. Just like build what you can, run what you got. And honestly, like I'd have never had the jar still I got uh, if it wasn't for. I mean, Ricky called me up and uh, and so worked got, me out a deal. You got a battery um, jar rig that hooks up to a 26-gallon milk can. Correct? And, well, I just ended up, yeah. he's just such a high-quality dude that he just, he he ended up with more way more value than, uh, than one could afford. And, uh, you know, just was tremendously good to me. But, um, so I just ended up with a still that, you know, that's what I told Rick when I got it. I mean, I parked my mine up on the shelf um, right there where he had to say it would be before I got the new one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, set it up. And I said from the beginning that that still makes significantly better liquor than I do. Um, <laughs> never been never been in the ballpark. I just haven't. Yeah. You know, like when you get a you know a distillery worth when you run on a distillery worthy rig man it makes a huge difference you know and everything's done by experience and built by you know the original it's definitely uh it makes a difference you know not not say and, and kind of like with the air still it'll make liquor right you know a little one gallon copper pot set up is gonna make a lot better liquor out of a gallon it's just you know yeah it's, no it makes, i i it completely definitely agree. makes a difference you know like it, like yeah. you know, you, you you get these guys and they're all like, oh, stainless is better than copper. Stainless is better than copper. And then all of a sudden they get a copper still, and they're like, oh, uh, 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 copper's better than stainless now. I love to, I love copper. And, and that's that's how it goes, you know. Like Looking, hitting below the belt, ain't you tonight? <laughs> no, that's what he's talking about, man. <laughs> Something like that would have been like, well, if they had a given to them, then they. Man. You know, I think everything oh. has its place. Honestly, it does. Um, I don't run frequently enough to keep a copper rig. It's, it's just that simple. Um, if I did, I would, but it's hard enough for me to keep up with cleaning what I got. I can't, I'd either have to run more often or clean more often. And I don't doubt that I get time to do either. Um, I'm lucky. I haven't cleaned out that air still. It's still got bush latte peach in it. <laughs> That's uh, how did that, how still did that smell like mouthwash? <laughs> It's gonna smell like every, whatever whoever runs. I'm giving it away. I'm never gonna use that thing again. And well, that's kind of my thing. Yeah. Whoever uses it, it's gonna taste like mouthwash for a while. Hope you like <laughs> mint. Put some, run some chocolate through it. Make some mint chocolate chip. Uh, <laughs> you know, though, honestly, like it's not a terrible little rig if you want to regulate it down mm -hmm. and start to understand the concept of distillation a little bit. But you're right. never going to get it clean enough to really decipher cuts. It's no, so it's smeared. Even. even when you do reduce it way down, it's it's smeared. I mean, people kept telling me, "Oh, you can buy a thing for that." And I'm like, "Yeah, I got it. I got you can it." Also, buy a beer um, for that too. Oh, like, you really have to just be like, "Look, man, I'm collecting the uh, 95, and then I'm calling it." When, right. When you're, when you're running something that small, like you said, smearing your cuts, like. Just cut it off a little early. You'll be all right. Well, I mean, and I don't even know what your cuts are at an air still level. On. I mean, I, I know you can make it in theory. I'm just saying, like, realistically, I'd rather see somebody learn on a beer keg, make make a little I, investment, I, I, I learn on a yeah, beer keg. That's where yeah. it's going to make sense. Yeah, you got to yeah. Yeah, use a beer keg and have about <laughs> 1,400 half pint jars. You're right. Jelly jars. Uh <laughs> No, I, I don't get all the cuts, 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 cuts. Or something fucking bigger if you can do it. But starting on an air still isn't going to be where to learn dipshit. That's what I'm saying. Not at all. Like, I, don't, like, I don't get doing all these jar cuts, jar cuts. It's like, look, man, you cut after your heads mm -hmm. and then cut off at your tails. Because at the end of the day, it's all going in the same container anyways. You know, but, it's like, I mean, as long as you make your heads cut and cut where, before your tails hit, you can put everything Oh, on. yeah. 
I'm a five gallon bucket dude. If I'm running, I I like to slide a five gallon bucket on there and just not worry about swapping jars and overfilling and shit. I've been collecting in that Gatorade cooler. Uh, Makes it easy to fill up out of. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like to overfill the flake stand. That's yeah, Sean likes to blood worms and you know that's his thing. Yeah, I tell you, he's got a lot. He's practiced a lot on that this year, so he's uh he's good. You know. Uh. I didn't even know you made liquor, Sean. He I don't. don't. He watched oh. me do it. He used to. Yeah. Once, like yeah. once or twice, but just something to talk can, about with his I friends. I can work a hoe, though. I can tell you that. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> me too. But, <laughs> uh, oh, I understand. You, you do grain. You do brandy. What's your favorite thing to run? Oh, I really I like corn barley liquor. Like, that's what I'm going to make if I'm going to make something I'm going to enjoy. Um, what I normally end up making more often, though, is corn and sugar. And I'm not talking fancy anything. I mean, it says cane sugar on it. Uh, do you cold mash or do you cook your sugar? No, I'll, I'll cook, cook and your convert corn? the corn. Okay, so, so you, And I'll just use corn. high You just bump it. Yeah, okay. I just I bump it. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I keep that I run more consistently um, cuz yeah. it's it's easy it's less expensive you know i mean and it's not bad like it's what i consider liquor that's and give or take what they would have done back then you know i mean that's the way i would have learned um, more or less the uh, the converting the corn they'd have cooked it a bit they you know stabbed the bag of sugar you're, in it you're and, converting that corn with that high temp amylase and the uh, alpha gluco yeah yeah, I really like that. I'll tell you who, uh, well, when I met Rick to pick up that jar rig, the four jar setup that I got, um, we was down at Hazard Fest is where we met. And uh, KY Brandon Shine, um, what's his actual name? Royal. Oh, Royal. Yeah, um, Royal was down there. And uh, he was the guy that told me about that. Um, and you, so I, do you get from, from that from festival, from ordered solutions? one of each. And then uh, waited for him to make the video so I'd know how to use it. But <laughs> I was like, man, I thought that was just the coolest shit ever. And it turns out it is. Like, I like it a lot. It's definitely a lot easier. Yeah. A lot more leeway. Uh, what would you ask, Sean? Do you get yours from Firm Solutions? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I've never had an issue with them at all. I mean, they're super receptive. I did uh, my first order. They sent one bottle to my house and one bottle somewhere else. I called them best customer service. They was overnight. And I was like, it is not that big of a deal. How about y'all just put another box in the mail and just send yeah, it to me. I'm good. And uh, they were super nice about it. They sent a little bit of free stuff with it. You got to uh, like that, man. Like, you know, you get something wrong. You got to take care of them. Even yeah. If, no, it, it don't matter what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like it could just be something small, extra, when I uh, when I was in high school, I worked at KFC and I had a manager like, "Look, man, if we're out of something, just offer them a little extra. Like, toss them an extra biscuit. Like, oh, I threw you an extra biscuit in there, and you right. know, people are happy. Like, oh man, got me a free biscuit. I know I'd be happy if I got a free biscuit. Well, <laughs> we all knew that easy. <laughs> you damn right. You know, <laughs> and, uh, a little extra value makes them feel makes makes you feel better. They even got to yeah. Do that thing. I like biscuits too. I get yeah, it. Same. <laughs> No, but they yeah, they was. They were solid. I mean, they just um but I don't know how long you're supposed to be able to let it sit in your garage either, but I've used it when it's been quite sitting around quite a while, it still seemed to work. Yeah, if it still works, it's still good. Mm -hmm. Hey, just like I tell you all that look, man, expiration date on that food package is a suggestion. Right. right. That's kind of I mean, especially when it comes to making liquor. Um yeah. <laughs> hey, man, it's, it's like a so doubled good. up suggestion yeah i used uh i found yeast that was over a year old like oh man it's all right it works oh yeah you know? like, yeah now, you, you'll see on you'll see these guys like you can't let mash sit longer than a few weeks you know, i've let mash sit yeah, for almost a months. year oh yeah six months. there's I a barrel right right there here. that's been sitting there since summer open ferment that's just fine yeah, so, um, yeah, that i'll, I'll pulled half out of and made a run off of and it's just fine yeah it'll be all right you know like, there's i think people get too caught up sometimes and it's like man you ain't got to get all caught it is what it is like it'll be all right yep well, don't worry about it too much and there's so many people that are you know real technical and you know 
oh, science is science. That Yes, it is science, but you can really get away from the science aspect of it, you know, once you kind of get the general idea of how things work. And then just use the science when something fucks up. Yeah, I, I've certainly benefited a lot from that type of thinking and like the, the folks that was and invested in reading about it. Um, I mean, as far as like making a brandy, you know, if I'd make a brandy or I'd make a rum, they would stall out. I'd have never firm it at all, but everything I had ever made had grain in it, you know? So I just, there was little tidbits I didn't understand. And you can really, really, really simplify all the fancy science stuff to use it practically, um, which is really the way I like to look at it. Um, you know, dumb it down for me type thing. Um, hey, hey, make it to where it's, it's understandable and then you really, then you can grasp it better because user we, friendly. Yep. You're damn right. We all don't think the same, you know, like, yeah, man, it ain't got to be super technical. Just keep it simple and. And like I said, man, it, a lot of it's eh, it'd be aight. <laughs> you know, like I'd yeah. be aight. Like I'd yeah. be aight. Like, we'll worry about it when something bad goes wrong. That's how I am. Like, yeah, hey, if something happens, then we'll worry about that shit. You know. Well, there's a handful of things that I'm concerned with. I'd prefer to run on electricity over propane if I'm indoors. Um, it's just I feel it's safer. Did I it run is. with propane indoors for a long time and say it's just fine? Absolutely. Are you a thousand percent not supposed to do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's a silly idea to say that running over a flame inside of a shelter that it already said just the burner says you're not supposed yeah. to do that. And then you're going to distill liquor over top of right. it and have a possible right. venting issue. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'll agree with people there that that could be a little, a wee bit unsafe. I wouldn't do it around children. You know, that would just be a terrible thing. Or like, um, you know, it's like, man, this is this is my people are like this is my garage. It's like, well, what if you get a fire in your garage? Where are you gonna sleep at tonight? And, you know, like you got you got to think about things like that. That's you know, yeah, like, yeah. No, that's that's a very valid point. I mean, so ultimately, making certain that as fun as my little rig is to run, it's better ran outside if I'm gonna run that little Amazon pot. Um, yeah. You know, it's not the safest rig to run inside nor would i recommend somebody do it over fire you know that's just it's silly there's a lot of room for error there um but it is what it is and if you have the opportunity to not to then have at it so um you're right man i use a burner inside <laughs> right. yeah i mean i you're right. hey, it is what it is i uh <laughs> i have done a lot of that but now if i have the opportunity not to i'll run on yeah. electric yeah i don't um, have just, electric out there and i'm not doing all that extra shit and Right, right. Yeah, no, if I if I didn't have it, I'd probably anyway. be a different route. Um I can't remember the last time I ran it still. I just talk about it. Coming here on Monday night gets me my fix. Right. Yeah. No, I hear that. <laughs> Mine got retired. Um I took him to the car wash and hosed them out and put them away. The jar rig's not even like it's stowed. Um uh, yeah. So there's just no way. You know, I've just been busy as there's man, there's no man, way it's been cold as shit man like yeah yeah it was 70 degrees today but it was 30 like three days ago <laughs> yeah no that's what mine are tucked in they're they're taking a nap but that's what's fun about the little air still though as poor as it may be or like you know as it's not gonna be high quality but it's still making liquor you yeah. know so it's you get your little it may fans. not i may not have made anything i was super proud of but then again if i had never made any it may have not been so bad. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, so I, I got to try and look at it that way, about too. the first shit you made, you know, you're like, ah, I don't know about you. Know, you don't know. You're like, this is awesome. And then, like. Yeah, you know, you're just walking around and handing everybody a jar of heads. Like, yeah, that's, you know, that's what everybody does. It, yeah. And like I said, if you could go back, you'd be like, oh, man, what the hell was wrong with me? What was wrong with me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. and it needs to be 160 proof if you're going to show it to your buddies. because that's, that's how right. everybody it's likes to drink. Yeah, it's got to be 190. Yep. By all then means. You, then you burn. hand it to them and they're hacking up a fucking lung. <laughs> this stuff yeah. is fucking terrible. Fire. Yeah. Well, I mean, their top cool. lip starts going like they yeah. can't even, all they did is hit their lip. And it's just, Woo! they can't <laughs> breathe. Um, <laughs> they can't breathe. I think, I think that's a beginner thing, man. Everybody chases that proof early mm. because it's kind of like, you know, how high can I make? I got to make this. I want to make vodka. I 
all these people are putting out 160, 170, and it's like, man, you getting 130? That's a nice, that's all right, man. Like, that's what you want. Yep. Well, and the same thing with MASH, too. You know, I mean, a lot of people will shoot for that 1.09 or, or, you know, a little higher when, you know, like we do Apple Brandy, we run it up to 1.06. Right. And let it and let it go, or yeah, you know, just grain, just bump it to one one point oh seven or you know oh seven five or whatever. Let them apples sit, let them just sit, and and even when even when they drop, you know, they're still in there just rotting and and doing their thing, and you know, like don't don't be in a hurry to run your fruit when it's done fermenting, man. Let it sit, unless right. it's watermelon. Run that shit as soon as possible. There was that, a guy years that flesh, ago. A flesh will sour. Yep, there was a guy years ago that told me that uh, he considers like your grain is a one ferment and then it's done. <laughs> but he can he called like brandy when you make brandy, it's two ferments, which really it's not. But you know you you ferment and then when, once everything settles, you know you rack it off. That's what and, I do. I into secondary. something else, yep. yeah, and, and let it sit for a couple of days or a week or whatever, and then and then run that off. When when you use that secondary, man, you will see. A nice layer of sediment and yeast in that second second ferment, secondary racking. Yep. There's a million terms they got for it, but I'm telling you, if you really want to clean your liquor up, you can let it sit till it's clear. And you know that's what some people do. They let it sit until it's crystal clear, mm -hmm. and then they know they can they can go right off of anything. Or if you want to speed it up a little bit, use the secondary. Because I can throw my pump in the bottom and just let it do the work, and then any leaves and yeast spent yeast that comes out it goes in and then it sits and it settles again and then i stay above that and i find that if you use like a clearish container for your secondary it's a lot easier for you to know where mm -hmm. to, where to stop and where to siphon off the top at yep so um dustin talk a little bit about uh your decision on the yeast that you use are you uh, a yeast guy you turbo yeast guy you distiller's yeast i mean do you i i'm more often than not yeast fleshman's anymore um oddly oh, enough nice. i'm just a bread yeast and go i really played with a a lot of yeast uh especially there for a little while uh we had a buddy on tiktok i think he's around for him sean uh trails in supply mm -hmm. yeah yeah so and he was kind of going ham sending me a bunch of yeast so i really got to play with like a ton of yeast strains that was all over the spectrum of of doing cool stuff um and i think that where where i would probably find more value in that would be anything that i did let have a little bit of wood that would be i wasn't picking up wild differences i mean there was subtle notes don't get me wrong but ultimately if you're going to make a jar of apple pie does a subtle note matter not at all and so i started looking at things like grain versus fruit um and put a lot more emphasis on stuff like that what can you play with and adjust there you know if i do run a brandy can i can i do an actual secondary fermentation am i going to give it a little bit of sugars anything change and honestly more often than not i'd find there wasn't huge differences but it was all worth playing with um i don't know if that really answers the yeast question or not but i also just really love to leave a barrel open in the garage and everything works here rapidly so mm -hmm. like there's a must be a decent amount of yeast in here that just live forever depending um, on the time of year everything works rapidly <laughs> yeah it'll it'll just i mean i don't know why it uh you know it just it works off right away so whether it's on the grain or uh and living through some ridiculously high temperatures or if it's just in the room yeah. uh, mm -hmm. but so i'm always also that may be where i'm not finding much of a yeast variation too is that there's just wild yeast here that thrive mm -hmm. and they're doing the job first before anything i put in um but that's, I, I usually have to let it sit till the next day before it's cool enough and you know like right. you said, everything's open you just leave it open and let it do its thing yeah so i, can see I, I, I can may throw a moving blanket wild. over to keep the bugs out or whatever um but that's about as much as I ever do with mash. Yeah. Um, you know, Less then you open it up. We, and you we ain't making beer. Butter. You ain't got to do a lot of extra shit. No. <laughs> we just yeah, make liquor, man. 
I wouldn't love this hobby if you had to be sterile all the time and everybody spraying everything and all that. I just, I couldn't. There's, there's too much in it. Yep. Well, I mean, like, you got to be clean, but in my mind, you got to be clean, but yeah, um, you, not beer clean. You, you clean-ish, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You got to be yeah. clean, but you ain't got to be sterilized. You ain't got to be right. sterilized. Like, yeah. Like, well, yeah, you're going I mean, to sterilize. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's nobody, the whole process. nobody wants to cook in a filthy kitchen, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but at the same yeah. time, like, well, you ain't sterilizing your whole kitchen and every utensil you use with star stands and all that before you use it. So like, you want a nice, clean kitchen, you know. Mm -hmm. I agree with you there wholeheartedly. But uh, so, do you do much flavoring? I know you use the jars. Um, the Rick yeah, I I like to play with the jars. Um, and if I'm making something specific, like I did do a, a apple brandy this year. Like I say, I I failed to compete in the world of brandy, but I certainly bought a bunch of concentrate and took a stab at it. And uh, eh, it was all right. But uh, I did. Then I took that once I made the first run. I did, I ran it on the pot still and uh just open on the column still and uh wasn't real proud of it so like something like that i'll do a, a back flavoring uh whether it's which i haven't ever had anything that i'll use consistently i mean anything from coffee syrup flavoring to kool-aid packets to um you know fresh fruits i really enjoy doing fresh fruits but then you got the investment of of doing it so more often than not if i end up with fruit in a jar it'll be frozen just mm -hmm. collect whatever that's hey it's half bad or whatever and it certainly still does its job um you know things like that i'll throw in jars um but i haven't really found like a go-to um i do i prefer to make something that's probably more comparable to a vodka than than a traditional moonshine um because and then it's versatile you know, the, you can make just about any drink you're going to want to make. I mean, you're not going to make an old fashioned, but, um, you know, anything you'd want to make moonshine out of in my mind is going to be better without that flavoring, unless I'm trying to fill a barrel or, or do something along those lines. So, um, I do play with a lot of flavor, but it normally needs dumbed down and an additional flavor added before anybody would want to drink it in my mind. Um, you know, so that'd be the jar I'd, I'd hand you first would be something that I've actually made. It's almost more of a cocktail at this point. Yeah. So, I mean, I've went all the way from that guy that was proud of that high proof jar that I was handing you. So like, this is just genuinely the best tasting, most drinkable alcoholic beverage that I've made to this point. Yep. And yep. that's the jar I'm proud of. I don't I, give a I shit. I reached that point last year where I'm like, man, I got to come up with some mix. I got to come up with some really good mixed drink, you know, mixed flavors. And everybody yeah. has their own thing, so you, you gotta you gotta figure out something that nobody else does, and then you well, gotta do it. Yeah, more and if you want to drink a jar hundred proof, or you want to drink a shot hundred proof, I'll gladly pour you one. Yeah, you know, I mean that's that's fine, and if you're proud of that and go at it, I don't really enjoy shooting hundred proof vodka. Right, that's not my bag. <laughs> you know, and I've well, never been that guy. I'm not gonna be that guy today. Like so, like, I'll make a blueberry lemonade, and it'll be about you know thirty or forty proof. I'll drink it with my pinky up. And I'll then, drink, yeah, I'll drink uh, everything. I drink you, everything that way. You get people are like, "Oh, I like it one 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 twenty," and I'm like, "Man, this is for enjoying all night. Like, you drink I, this whole jar tonight." I've got a question. <laughs> I've got a question for you guys. You said one twenty. Do you guys get any flavor with anything over one twenty? Well, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, oh yeah, I make got well, flavor in it from the beginning to the end. Certainly, off a jar rig, you get flavor, or even with just a thumb. And it's it's you running know. off of a way over one twenty. I mean, I'm talking you, dude. I 160, that yeah. Kool Aid, that first Kool Aid video I made to be a dipshit on TikTok, and then it actually worked. And I was like, at one, I left a jar here at one ninety proof. I'll let people drink it. That's how much flavor it has. They're like, that is like drinking rubbing alcohol, but it tastes like Kool Aid. And I'm like, right. dude, I'm telling, I don't even yeah. understand how it works. So, um, when, when it, I've aged, uh, brandy on wood and I always like it better when it's clear, like I always yeah. liked it better when it was clear. And that's just my, 
my uh, <laughs> my preference. That like, no. you you the flavor's there. You just gotta wait for the the burn to go away when you're in the 130, 140, 150. You just yeah. gotta wait for that burn to go away, and it takes a couple little sips before you finally get to actually taste the the yeah. what's in there. Well, I mean, your flavor comes through in the water, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so of course the higher proof less you got, but I mean it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like you said, using jar rigs, it's there from the beginning. Um, and then it, it might not be there in the end unless you're re- popping your jars off and refilling and putting them back on. But if you're using a thumper with an infuser that you can dump, your first jar and your last jar are gonna have the same exact flavor, but the first jar is just gonna be really high and really hot. And mm-hmm. And when I mean flavor, I mean infused flavor, but your later jars will have more of the pot, the the mash flavor into it, just like your normal run. Yep. But uh, So I know that was a big topic on Facebook, that there's no flavor in anything over 120, and I, I don't believe that. They, oh, well, no, but at the same point, though, there's a ton of truth to the water carries the flavor. Yes. Because, like, if I'm trying to distinguish if I like something or there might be something to I don't like, I'm going to put it in more water Bring it and down. try it again. You know what I mean? And and I'm going to, to me, get more out of it that way of what it really tastes like. It's just like I um, like I like my alcohol on ice because I think that the ice yeah, whiskey the sitting on ice and, and it brings more flavor to it. And that's just how I like it. And, yeah. and that's a good way of, of trying it, <clears throat> trying it as you're running, you know, get yeah. a little bit in a glass and then just add a little bit of water to it and knock it down. And then you mm-hmm. kind of get a general idea of how it tastes, you know, it's going yeah, to taste. There is more flavor at lower proof because like you said, the water carries over. There's less alcohol in your mash that you're distilling. Uh, what I'm talking about is using an infuser. You're able to keep your 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 main flavor consistent while your while your your distillate flavor gets stronger from your mash as you get farther into your run. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, at the end, I just put it all together. <laughs> it's all going together at the end. That's how I do it. Like, oh well, you, or you gotta you gotta this much 150, and you got you know your your 120, 110, whatever down to say 95. And what are you going to do with it? You're just going to keep each jar by it? No, I put it all together and wind up with uh, quite a bit of distillate at a, a lower proof, around 125, 130. And then you from there, you can leave it there and uh, or you can take it down farther. And then you grab you a half jar of them later tails and go ahead and smack that in there too. <laughs> uh, be my best advice. Yeah, right, right before they get cloudy. Yeah. Just don't grab the later, later jar. Yeah. It winds up tasting like corn. <laughs> or in other words, I make significantly better liquor. I don't know if anybody else has ever done this, but I make significantly better liquor if I'm not drinking and making liquor. Um, I don't know what you guys normally do when you run a still. Um, I, you know, I have oversampled and... <laughs> yeah i found that i'm better at it if i'm if i'm just uh just not drinking um but i've also found that i really don't need much more than a smell and to feel it on your hand to really know where you're at i mean as much i I ran this equipment repetitively you know it's not if it's something new sure but if i've ran it before i mean i've ran it you know you kind of get a it comes a with feel experience. for it. You know, it's just like, you know, you drive the same car every day, man. It starts making just the uh, the oddest little ting. You know, like, oh, damn, that sounds expensive. And, yeah. You, know, you get used to doing the same thing every day. You know, yeah. it ain't no different than, you know, a, a tradesman. He does a certain job every day. And he's a master at it. You know, he just, it's what he does. He knows the ins and outs. He knows the easy way, the hard way, the, how to do this, how to do that. And it's just, it, experience you know mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> ben, i agree reuse, with you there Bennett reuses the back set i'm not a back set fan nope man. get your uh uh bacon soda ready <laughs> <laughs> oh man don't uh, don't call sean for ph problem advice he will tell you to dump a whole box of bacon soda in there and see what happens <laughs> you didn't really do that did you oh he did. certainly did well certainly i mean did. then again if they did it then that's kind of halfway on he's them, a newbie so. he's a newbie you know <laughs> no he, he looked for sean looked to sean for advice and sean's did, like i'll just 
dump half that box in there. Nothing happened. What'd you tell him? Dump more in there. Dump it all in there. So funny story. <laughs> he he. Our buddy was asking us. He says, "Man, he said, uh, uh, do you guys do sour mash?" And we're like, "Well, you know, not really. I mean, you know, we have, but I mean, we don't because of that. You know, the potential fucking problem you run into." Uh-huh. And uh, I want to do it. I want to do it. And well, he done it. And I said, "I'm over here texting easy." I said, "Well, he's gonna do it." I said, "I can't wait. I can't wait. One of these to." Hopefully it fucking stalls. Hope it stalls, man. I waited for months for him to do that. It stalled. And it stalled. <laughs> and he calls me. I said, dump a foot. I said, you got some bank city? Yeah. How much you want me to put in a cup? I said, oh, I'll just fucking dump half the box. <laughs> uh, oh, my Lord. He said, he said, do I stir it? I said, well, just have someone stir it while you're dumping it. It'll be all right. There you go. Yeah. What? <laughs> Yeah, let's air. not take any chances here. Let's no. not. <laughs> add, air, add air while you're dumping it, man. <laughs> oh, he was he was upset with Sean for a few days. <laughs> well, you know, some things just make sense. Um, and that was yeah. one of them. Hey, I learned yeah. the hard way when I was Got, using baking soda. Me I'm too. Adding a little, adding a little, and then you know it clumps in the box, man. A big old just <laughs> oh yeah, a big old mountain comes rolling out, and I was in a car boy, so it's more like a volcano neck. And dude, it was just <laughs> and I'm out in the out in the barn. Like, thank God I'm out in the barn. I would not want to hear about this. I don't. I don't even understand how I've I've overran a match three runs in a row. <laughs> Why do I always fill it? There's no reason. You can just stop putting the water in. You don't have to keep adding the water. But we all do it. And we shove it right up there to the tippy top. Like, ah, it'll probably be all right. It, Maybe know, we'll even put a paddle right. across it to try and direct it back. Here. It don't matter, man. Like, oh, yeah. It's going to get you. It's yeah. all part of the learning process. Yeah. You I mean, you know, and, and that's the thing too, when you do shit like that, uh, you try to get every bit you can out of the barrel. Yeah. That's the and, idea. Yeah. It, it's money. And it winds you know? up being on the, in the floor and on the side of the barrel, but Hey, yep. well, or, or like all your yeast and stuff out of the top will flow out and you're like, it ain't ferment no more. Yeah. So now I ain't got no yeast in the yeast. Yeast. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm good on that, man. <laughs> I'm good on that. So uh, yeah, I used to like pushing them, but I've I've settled way down. If I get one point zero five on a on a green mash, I'm good to go. I don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I just I don't. I ain't going to push it. I like. I mean, I'll, I'll I will if the situation calls for it. But um, if it's just straight corn, I'll I'll leave it be there and it'll make good drink it better for it. You know, I mean, it, it'll end up better in the end. It'll not that you can't make a good liquor with, with sugar. You absolutely can. I just, I won't push it. If it's there, why add it? You know what I mean? Yep. <clears throat> um, fuck. I was going to ask a question. I can't remember what it was. But you're damn right, Ben. You learn faster by your mistakes, man. You it usually absolutely. takes one time. You always learn more from a failure than you ever do a success. Mm-hmm. That's, that's apparently why you have to d- dump a half a box of baking soda in your match. Hey, you, <laughs> just you so you learn faster. Yeah, you got to learn faster. Like, I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> but, uh, we um, all learn differently. Yep. For sure. Uh, didn't Master Distiller Sean Rigsby teach at a uh, Bodrum still class recently? Hmm. No, no. I thought you was doing one of the. Uh... Are you thinking of Silcott? No, not building the still. I thought you was making a mash at one or teaching oh, somebody to. Oh, I went to uh, one of uh, Doug Taylor's. I was okay, Northern Yankee. Yeah, Northern Yankee. Actually, the guy, uh, one of the guy, the guy that um, dumped all that baking soda in there, he went too. They didn't <laughs> talk about that though. And uh, yeah, that was a good, that was a good time, man. But yeah, if y'all get a chance, get down to uh, Northern Yankee Moonshine, Doug Taylor, and uh, it's a good time. Good time. Yep. You don't have to check it out. I, I'd seen you was doing something. Right I just couldn't remember where it was. So um, I'm going to be in Middleport on the 20th at Benz's place. Middleport on the 20th. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know how far away that is from you, but it's two and a half hours. It's about two and a half, three hours from me. What direction, Easy? It's it's on it's like real close to Pennsylvania, on the Ohio River. Okay, you may be past me then. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just yeah. it's probably like forty five minutes from you. Sure, something like that. So, um, let me yeah, see. Vince is his distillery. He's opened up down there. Still, it's getting delivered. And our buddy Sturge wrote a he wrote an Ohio Moonshine song. And he's celebrating a release. So. That's anybody, awesome. in that, anybody in that area were like, uh, uh, hey, man, if you can make it, I think Hooch is going to drive up. It's like an hour from him. And uh, and I, old Peterman, I think he's going to show up. And Hey, David, yeah, we'll be on Hillbilly Jam. I'll see you there. So if, we'll I'm, uh, if I'm in Ohio, I'll try and make it over by for sure. That would be awesome. Just come he's out together. and see everybody. Ben says he's going to cook us a bunch of food, and he's going to serve us corn liquor that he claims is brandy. Cause that's his thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we'll try to make it happen. And so if you can make it, that'd be cool. But um, if you had any advice to a new person that's wanting to get started, what would be your advice to them? Don't listen to us telling you what to do. We've all got our opinions, but all this shit works. Ain't none of us. Right. Um, there's, there's there's a little bit of safety stuff where all of us are right you know and we're all pretty much saying the same thing but just understand that it's yours you get to do it however the hell you want if you want to do it on an air still and that be your jar of liquor and it's good to you and you're proud of it then good for you that's your liquor the whole point of making liquor for yourself is there isn't any rules to it you're you know you're likely probably not supposed to do it to begin with um so if you're gonna let somebody tell you how to do it, then why are you doing it to begin with? Yeah, um, right. would be I guess my best advice to a new person. You can learn a lot if you do listen to us. Um, but again, ain't, ain't nothing set in stone. There's there's a thousand different ways to get there. And if you think it ought to work, maybe ask somebody instead of "Is this how I should do it? Would it be safe to do it this way?" Like that's a fair, you know, that's a fair type of question. My thing is like, dude, try it and let me know how it went. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I always just say, well, like, run it, see what happened. Well, is the smash still good? I don't know. Did it, like, try and kick you or grab your arm when you walked by? Well, and pat it on the top of his belly. Tell good job, little mash. You know, I mean, it's probably fine. I'm not there. I can't smell it or taste it. But if, you know, if it doesn't smell like somebody just died in it, it's probably okay. If it does smell like somebody just died in it, it's probably okay. Run it, you know, just run it and see. You don't know till you run it. Yeah, and, and if it comes out of the end and it sucks, run it again. <laughs> yeah, and I mean sometimes the funky ones aren't bad though. Something right. unique will happen to it in the still, and you know, I mean that it dances around and becomes something else. Um, you know, I mean how even even Sean's made liquor that won a competition, so something happens while it's in the still. Um, something happened. I, I think he took over somebody else's still while they were running. He did the old switcheroo. Else you know that, that actually checks out. Uh, that, so. <laughs> for a beginner, I'd recommend Clamp, Mark Morgan. Uh, for a beginner, I'd recommend Clamp. Man, uh, Pace is a dangerous bird. If you know what you're doing, <laughs> you know Pace Cap and all that. It it could be a little more dangerous. Um, I'd recommend Clamp for a beginner. Get your feet wet. If all you have access to is Clamp, don't do it to it. But nowadays, it's like. Oh, well, you can get clamps on your still for $100 more. Do it. And then if later on you want to, uh, later on you want to, you want to get a pay still just to experience it, you'll do it and it'll be awesome a couple times and you'll realize it's twice the amount of work as running a normal still. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is, you know, and yeah. You know, the heritage is fun, up. though. The learning yes. is fun. Yep. Easy. I got to grab a drink real quick. I'll be right back. Grab solo. Nice. Oh, damn. Sorry hat? about that. I yeah. left it up there. I forgot it. Go put it back on. Fuck off. <laughs> this was a, a much normal, more normal show. Dude, the American Whiskey Podcast last night. That was one of the biggest shit shows I've seen since since the uh, JM fiasco. 
<laughs> and and it was awesome. You know, funny story is I haven't seen any one of the American whiskey guys on here tonight. Uh, they're probably all still. I bet they went to bed early tonight because they was uh, they was uh, it was lit. Yeah, they <laughs> they got wound up last night. Yeah, they did. Started making phone calls. I liked how you was like, I could talk, I could text, but I can't talk. <laughs> I knew you would catch that. I did. That was awesome. Okay. I said I wasn't partaking in this podcast until Sean Ringsby's back. All no. right. You left. So it's been quiet for what, five minutes or so? No, nah, we, we actually had, we was talking about you while you was away. I don't blame you. came back, we had to stop. Tell me what kind of piece of shit I am. Oh, we don't have That's to tell you. what everybody else you, does. You already know. Yep. You already uh, know. Yes. I think the words no talent came up. Uh, at least, okay. <laughs> no talent, sugar shiner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the beautiful thing about this shit. Just because you don't do something doesn't mean you can't. You're damn right. Right. They, they, we all wouldn't be here if we couldn't do some shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the same thing that easy. Just asked me, what would I tell a new guy? And I'm like that. None of us is right. We all got our opinions and we're all pretty damn stubborn. But like that don't mean you can't do exactly the opposite of what we tell you and still make liquor. You're you can do whatever the hell you want. And still if you just want to follow the rules, why would you be doing this to begin with? You know, I mean that's you got a point. Hey, you know, it's it's a lawless profession for a reason because there are no rules here. Mm-hmm. Do your thing. Do you do your thing? You know, yeah. The way in a lot want. of ways, I like to play by some of the TTP rules because I like to see can I can I genuinely produce something that could sit on the shelf next to something that was made in a distillery, and it be something that makes sense. You know, can is that something that you can do? And that's all I really care. I'm not. I don't have enough. You know, capacity. I got tiny little stills. Um, I can't. I mean you would lose, you know, substantially if you ever tried to do anything in any capacity I've ever done it to, to ever like produce anything beyond what you would consume. But the whole idea would be, can I make something that if you did walk into a liquor store and that's the bottle you happen to grab, would you be like, what's this doing up there? Or is that going to be something where you're like, wow, that's good. And tell somebody else about it, you know, or share a drink at a party. You know, that's what I wanted to do. That's been my whole goal, I guess, all along. And uh, I don't know if I'm there yet, but I suppose someday maybe I'll find out. Um, You know, and I think that's why all of us like the idea of the jar in a distillery, you know, why, why Sean can be proud of that jar. It's, it's kind of, I guess what you'd, what you can do with the community we're in or the world we're in, I guess. So here's a fun fact. I have not finished one bottle from Sugarland yet. No. Nope. Well. It's it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I prefer brandy right, over grain. Right. So if I have yeah. any brandy, it doesn't matter if it's taters or easies or you know, Bennett's, because heaven forbid, I have no no help in any of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> just just ask Bennett, he'll tell you. <laughs> but no, seriously, I mean, I just, I prefer a shitty brandy over a good corn liquor. And I say shitty, I mean, I don't mean like scorched or nothing like that. I mean, just. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. everybody's got their taste, and I'd go. Normally, I'd go the the exact opposite, with the exception to uh, Noble's Apple Brandy. Was who's ever? You, you tried that when you came up and picked up that twenty six, didn't you? That was impressive, man. And I don't. I I'm trying to decide whether it's time, and because it's been going for a long time, but uh, I'm trying to decide whether the like it was it was good. Um, I was, I was just impressed. Like it inspired me to play with a little more brandy. Um, now I did make the one mango brandy that was phenomenal and it was the only brandy that I've put on wood ever, but it made it better, not worse. Mm -hmm. So I guess that I would have always, you know, always thought that brandy would have gotten better, not worse, but it would be from a very limited experience. It basically turned the mango flavor into a banana flavor. 
is what the notes of the I wood. I can see that. Yeah. The mango is really vanilla, good. Vanilla notes you get from the wood and yeah, you give it that, that banana. So, and that was just, uh, you know, like a community event, a bunch of leftover mangoes and, uh, all mangoes went in buckets. All buckets hey. got hit with yeast. And uh, sometimes it chooses you. <laughs> you, yep. know, it, you don't always get to choose it. Sometimes it just chooses hey. you, you know? Yeah. Like, I was like, Sean, I got 300 pounds of apples. And he's like, no, you don't. <laughs> it's like yeah. they chose me, bro. Like they chose hmm. me. What yeah. do we do with them? Let's make um, pies. We made that was exactly how pies. I felt during the pair videos was what why why does this stuff choose me though you know i think pairs choose everybody once and they're like no i don't care if they ever choose me again i'm not doing them not me i'm never there ain't no sugar them. it's so much fucking work and there's hmm. such the flavors not overly really stout you're talking right? about yeah. work i'm out of here hey, hey, we knew that <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, you know not saying you can't make a good pair of brandy it's just to me it was fun it was a fine drink. I mean, it was actually probably one of the better brandies I had done just for the sake of I went through the process. Those puppies was ripe, you know, like almost brown oh, running yeah. them through an I apple peeler. Tweaking. The skin would just come off. Yeah. So and I was just throwing them in and then I was just hitting them. Um, so, I mean, I think they would have been at the maximum amount of sugar you could have got out of them just yeah. because I was complacent about getting them done. It wasn't like I did that strategically. I did that because I'm a dipshit. I couldn't make it out to the garage to handle all them damn pears. Uh, there was I too many, dude. A hundred pounds of pears to do a 15 gallon mash with no sugar, and it was terrible, man. It was terrible. yeah. And you're you take up literally over half your fermenter. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, no, I that's the I thought I was going to put them all in one one of my 15 gallon blue barrels. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Like, dude, I wasn't even close. I had several six-gallon buckets filled top to bottom with pear apple looking mixture. Nice. And it gets all brown. It stains everything. It comes in kind of, I'm not a fan of pears. So. Yeah. I'll, uh, I will gracefully decline. I've <laughs> always had a hard time saying no to free sugar, though. Like, yeah. if somebody's like, hey, do you want this bulk of free sugar? I'm like, oh, God, yeah, I'll take any sugar. You, you yeah. Any sugar. Send well, but I just I just look at a fruit as sugar. So like I mean, dude, I've yeah. got boxes of dehydrated fruit. Mix I've that got, shit with something like, else. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's kind of the difference between like, are you going to run a small still or are you going to run a big still? Is if you're going to run a bigger still, like they look cool. They make wicked nasty TikTok videos, and arguably, in my mind, they make better liquor. Um, but it's just an opinion. I just believe you're going to get cleaner middles out of, you know, a larger run. You know, uh, speaking of that, um, not to cut you off, but I have noticed over the years, you know, watching people with, with those big stills or knowing people. Um, but it seems like what I've gathered is you get a lower proof off that still than you do with like a, say a 50 gallon or a 26 for whatever reason, a lot of them will start off at like 145, 150. You know, so when you're done, you'll have a, you know, say a bucket of, I don't know, fuck, one twenty five, and then another bucket of like one ten, or well, however big the still is. Now that does make. I mean, you got more surface area and more copper, copper for mm -hmm. longer to push, yeah. and then you got more heat retention because you've yeah. taken all that time to warm your, you know. And then, and I am a dipshit, but I understand a little bit of the, I guess, the scientific background of it a little bit, but like, it has to. You know, I mean, it like, has like to because it has that mass of all the, the mash yep. itself getting up the temperature. So for us to dial it back down on a small rig, we just bloop and it's there. Yeah. They've got to push more heat and keep it there just to keep the rig running. They're going to push a lower proof by having to run at a higher temp. You know, I mean, it's just. Yep. Um, what, what about like also with your mashes, there's so much more of an abundance of the ingredients. Yeah. Which more. Oh, drink, yeah. More flavor. Like. Like, so I could see, like, as opposed to doing a 15-gallon mash, you know, a 100-gallon mash is going to have, you know, in my mind, more flavor per gallon than that 15 because there's just so much more of a mass of ingredients to draw flavor from as opposed to just, even though, even though, like, supposedly your math is supposed to be equal throughout, but still, you know, it's more. Yeah, yeah it's not. Well, you can't 
I can't duplicate two runs on the same size and scale. So I definitely can't duplicate, you know, a thousand gallon yeah. run on a, not that I've ever done a thousand gallon run. I haven't, but I couldn't duplicate that on a, you know, on a five gallon, nor could I do it on a beer keg of the five gallon. Every, every run's going to be distinguishably different or it has been for me. I can get close, but distilleries can't get perfect. That's why they're blending barrels to get close to that. Exactly. And that's why most jars you pick up, it'll say artificial color, artificial flavor. <laughs> added. Even if it's just caramel color and some caramel, a little bit of caramel flavor. Like it's, yeah. it's, there's no way that say Jack Daniels puts out a million bottles a year and they all look and taste damn near the same. Right. Like, they're, they're, it's not a trick. It's, it's called blending. Let's, Let's blend it until it, yep. it add this and add that. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's not that that's the problem. I don't like to add this, add that aspect. Yep. I don't mind the, the theory behind blending. I think that's great. That's exactly what we're doing with on our smaller scale right out of the worm. You know, I mean, we're going, I like this. I don't like that. We're going to blend it together until we get something kind of uniform we somewhat like. You know, well, I mean. And a lot of people, they will, you know, they might not have thumpers, right? So they just say they run a 50 gallon pot. Right. You know, they'll, so they'll run three times, get enough liquor to fill up the pot and then run it again. So you're going to have three completely different fucking runs. Well, not completely, yep. but you know, um, that's what I'd primarily do with the, the can I got off you, Sean. How's that um, treating you? How's that treating you? Oh, loving it, dude. I did get a, I got a D flag and I got one more plate for it. And, uh, I don't ever run a D flag or a plate. Uh, <laughs> there's no need to, I'd rather drink pot still vodka anyway. <laughs> Let's, um, let's, let's tell a story about this can. Okay, so <laughs> fucking Hooch has a can. He sells it to Sean. Fucking Hooch brings it up here for my birthday party, <laughs> leaves it in my barn. The fucking can sits in my barn for a year, and then Dustin comes and picks it up and pays <laughs> Sean for it. But he did well, nothing. He did nothing. He didn't, he didn't touch it. He didn't even look at the damn thing one time for a whole year. Like, like this was complete hands off, made all the money off of it. Even though I, I know he didn't, he didn't make barely shit off of it. No. But but even still, like it got brought to me. I stored it and then it got picked up. I I met Dustin, got picked up with it. it was, Sean never even see. I think he's seen it one time at the party. Like, is that yeah, it? Like, yeah. And that party. was it. He didn't well, hear nothing or see anything about it until he was like, hey, man, Dustin wants to come get that. And I'm like, well, time to come get the damn thing. It's been sitting here. <laughs> like, well played, man. Well played. <laughs> that was a hell of a lease agreement, Sean, had there on the corner he, of the garage. Right. That was, Look at that room. I didn't know you was doing inside dry storage, but now that we're aware, whenever I get something up there, I'll just drop hey, it off and easy. Yeah, garage. just take it easy. He'll hold on That's to fine. it. If, yeah. it wasn't, if it wasn't plates and all that other bullshit, he I would have ran it. it. But that's too much work to clean and <laughs> and, and all Actually, that. I that would have been better for you. You should have fucking ran it and then left it fucking dirty and blame me. Now that's left, what you should have done. I should have done. So I, I built being a jar rig, right? And we went down to Gatlinburg at the beginning of March, about a month ago. And I got it all done. And I hit up Hooch. I was like, should I clean this? And he's like, hell no. <laughs> because they're always bitching at him because like Bean will sell Jason or Bennett shit and it'll still be dirty. I didn't even clean this. It was green and gritty. <laughs> I was like, here you go, man. You know what, though? You built the rig. He can he can certainly scrub it off. Said. It'll be fine. I, I built it at cost, too. I was like, hey, man, I'm just going because I love you, dude. I got you. Right. I ain't cleaning it. That's an extra 50 bucks. Right. <laughs> going to feel yeah. Billy that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, folks, I think we've had everybody on here long enough. Yeah, we could sit here and just talk shit all night long, and that's what would happen, so... We've we've done that once or twice before. Yeah, TikTok lives that go for four hours just talking. <laughs> talking, talking yeah, talking, so. it goes but, bad at about an hour and a half in though. So you gentlemen have a good night. Yeah, yeah, we get out seventeen minutes early before it gets too bad. So um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh, Sam's Stoneacker said, uh, "Ship his parts or refund his money." <laughs> Got him. They're out. On their way. So y'all have a great night. Yeah. Uh, we'll see y'all next Monday. Thanks for hanging out, Dustin. We appreciate you, man. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, look forward to talking to you again. You know, you need, ever need anything and uh, let us know, man. And I appreciate always, you, gentlemen. You know, we're always down. 
Ain't no yes, more sir. my functions right here, being So, oh yeah, yeah. y'all take no, care. I got you, gentlemen. Appreciate Everybody you guys. Have a great night, man. We love all y'all. See you next Monday. Yep. Y'all shine on. Oh damn.